Hi, welcome to my studio. Today I want to show you how to make a custom size container or a random size container. So um, the, the container that we're going to focus on today is a container that uh, we, we get our Costco nuts in. And my husband loves to save these containers to use for different things and they really are great reusable containers, but I think they are kind of ugly sitting around, so I kind of like the idea of making it pretty. So anyway, so here's an example of the container that we're going to make today. And I made this container to, to fit this particular size. Um, I made my cloth container to fit this plastic container. And I want to talk to you about how I get from here, fabric, to here. You can also see that I uh, made a container to hold these. They're called wipe and clear lens wipes. They're great for glasses. For those of you that wear glasses, I made some for Kleenex boxes and I'm putting one in each bedroom. And um, this particular one holds napkins. And um, so what you need to think about is what size you want your finished container, what fabrics you want to use, etc. So um, I don't normally make a template, but I did for the purpose of filming so that you can see what I'm doing here. So um, I decided to make this cloth container six inches by 5.25. And actually I could have made it smaller than that. You want to make the inside portion of it, which is the bottom part right here, about a quarter inch larger than the container that that you're actually trying to store in there or the box that you're trying to store in there. And so you start by drawing that particular square or rectangle on your um, on, on your fabric. Then you decide how tall you want it. So for this particular project, I took a measuring tape and I decided that I wanted to be seven inches tall, right? So then I took uh, my quilting ruler, I drew in my bottom base, this one being six inches by five and a quarter inch, and then I drew lines parallel to those lines, seven inches all the way around, and I have kind of a tic-tac-toe here, okay? So and I drew it right onto my fabric. Now I made it, again, I made a template so that maybe you can see what I did here. So each one of these lines represents something. So this is the fold. That This line right here is gonna be a seam. And then I just kinda drew in some lines here where I will cut it. But I'm gonna do this whole thing start to finish for you so that you can see what I'm doing. I decided that I wanted to make this particular one for dog treats. So occasionally in my sewing room, you will hear my dog barking, that's Sergio. And um, he <laughs> had are these colors. So anyhow, so I drew the tic-tac-toe on a larger piece of fabric and then I cut it down. And then the next thing I need to do is put some soft and stable on there. So I'm going to open up my soft and stable and I'm going to cut it to size. Soft and stable is a by Annie's product. Uh, hands down, it's just one of my favorite um, sewable foam products that we have um, on the market today. You can do this with your rotary knife or I'm going to do it with scissors right now. And I can trim it a little bit before I do the last step of that. So the fabric that I'm going to put in the inside for this purpose it's gonna be a piece of fabric that I have that doesn't mean a whole lot to me. So I just took a random piece of um, fabric from my stash. You're not gonna really see the inside of this, contain this container. So I didn't wanna 
to be honest with you, waste a really beautiful piece of fabric in there. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna use some really large pens. These are Clover, uh, produced by Clover. And I'm gonna pen these four uh, corner pieces, which are gonna just be removed late, later. I don't think it's necessary to use an adhesive spray. The stuff sticks to the foam pretty good. For the top, I'm just using some canvas that I had and I pre-washed it just to soften it up a little bit. I want it to be a little rustic looking. And this is the exact fabric that I used on this particular one. So as you can see, I did some machine embroidery work here. For those of you that have machine embroidery capabilities in your home studio, this is really a fun thing to do. I love blue poppies. It's my favorite, uh, favorite flower. So I was getting ready to make some blue jeans and I wanted to test out the colors on something else. So this was my test piece and I turned it into a container that I'll probably use in my sewing room. Okay, so now I have this anchor down with pins. So the first thing I need to do is I need to sew exactly on the line of the base of my project right here. Okay, and that's basically what I'm doing is I'm quilting this together here. Then I'm going to sew about an eighth of an inch inside these four corners and I'm going to top stitch here, 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 and here and I'm going to have the camera follow me so you can see what I'm doing. Then after I do that, I'm going to cut it down. It's so much easier to sew everything together and if you look real close here, you can see what I did. Here's my bottom and then I just literally came around all the way around like this. Those are gonna be about about where my seams are gonna be. So, um, and then I cut all this off. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate that part to you right now. So follow me to my sewing machine. This project is a lot easier to accomplish if you are actually using a walking foot. So I have the walking foot on my sewing machine and I, have my sewing machine needle stopping in the down position. If you work with a computerized sewing machine, you have that capability usually. If you don't have that capability, just rotate your hand well towards you till the needle is in down position. When you stop, that allows you to kind of move things around without um, misaligning your stitches. So I'm gonna pivot at each corner, raise my presser foot, and when you pivot, your needle needs to be down for those of you that are new to sewing. Needle down, raise presser foot, pivot, lower presser foot. Needle down, raise presser foot, pivot, lower presser foot. Okay, now I'm just going to come in a couple of stitches because I do this whole thing in one, one swoop here or so. And now I'm going to do the stay stitching that I need to do prior to cutting it. So I'm sewing an eighth to a quarter inch from that draw line, an eighth to a quarter inch from the top. My seams are going to be about three eighths of an inch. Needle down, raise presser foot, pivot. So if you're curious, I'm sewing on a Bernina 770 sewing machine. So I'm, I push a button and it raises my presser foot. I tap on the foot pedal on the floor and it lowers my presser foot. I did not secure this with a lot of pins. 
Um, I really only need a few. If you're not comfortable sewing without pins, what I suggest is that you use a large flat pin like I did here and put them in spaces that you're not actually sewing. That way you don't have to remove them as you sew. But do be careful because it's really easy to stab yourself with your pins. You can use a product like 505 Spray. 505 Adhesive is my preferred brand because it doesn't have a, a chemical smell to it at all. But you still should use it outside. So I usually uh, hold on to um, good sized cardboard boxes. I call them my spray boxes. Done with that part. So needle up. Oh, hold on a minute. I'm gonna cut my thread. Just a little tip for you guys. Um, I usually always keep a little pair of snips or scissors hanging on my auxiliary spool pen, which is just kind of a really neat thing to do. I also keep pin cushions near my machine when I'm sewing, and you'll notice that my pin cushions have a variety of pins. Pins are like tools in a tool belt of a carpenter. You don't use the same kind of screw or the same kind of nail for every single job, right? Um, same thing with pins. So these particular pins that I'm using right now are really fantastic for working through really thick products. Um, it's also really great for securing pattern pieces to your fabric. I usually don't use them for seaming though because they're so long and so bulky. For seaming, I typically use a smaller silk pin. But anyway, we can talk about pins more later. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pair of good quality fabric scissors. And I know that it's difficult to see what I'm doing right here, but um, my stay stitching is anywhere from an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch from my drawn line there. And I'm going to go ahead and cut about three eighths of an inch inside those lines because my seam is going to be about three eighths of an inch or a quarter inch. Actually, I'm going to go down to a quarter inch. And you'll see why the cutting matters in a few minutes. Scissors are also like tools in a carpenter's tool belt. Um, good quality scissors make the job a lot easier. So... They're also easier on your hands. This particular scissor that I'm using, or shear, this is a kind of a dressmaker shear, it's by Kai. Um, they're a fantastic scissor. They're not that expensive. They're not heavy. They're ergonomically designed and they can handle cutting through a lot of thicknesses. I carry them in my store. I, I own a fabric store, Rain Tree Quilting in Juneau, Alaska. And I'm, I retired from teaching early. I was a home economics teacher, and I had the good fortune of teaching sewing and culinary arts, which was really fun. But anyway, um, I really do test products. So I, when I bought a fabric store, I found myself buying one of each, different brands of scissors, pins, etc., and just really experimenting um, and then if I didn't like a product, I didn't order it. And if I loved the product, I would, I would order them and sell them because I felt like I could um, talk to my customers and my students because we own a teaching fabric store that I can confidently recommend certain products. Okay, so I've now got this ready to start sewing together. So you can see this is the inside. This is gonna be the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew each 
side and bind them pretty much at the same time. Um, the binding just helps to protect your seams. It, it makes it look nice. But I like to do it all in one step or in two steps as opposed to three steps. So I'm going to line my binding up. I'm not going to use pins or clips, but if you don't have a lot of experience with this, you might want to clip them. Don't try to use sewing pins through something that thick. Okay, your pin's just going to bend and you're going to hurt yourself. And I want to sew about a quarter inch seam. So my um, presser foot has a quarter inch marking on it. And it is difficult to see that from a, a camera's perspective, you know. If I make my seam too big, then I can't fold this over later, so. Next stitch. So then to come back around, I fold this in like this. I just tuck it in right there and wrap it around and I do put a clip to kind of hold that and then I come back and I stitch in the ditch because I know if I stitch in the ditch here I am going to catch my binding on the other side I'm not trying to sew the binding down right exactly at the fold you could do that there's enough room in this particular project that it um, it would be fine. It still fit the container. So I caught it there. So now I'm going to do this again. Fold it right sides together. I want my edge to line up. And I know that I measured everything really carefully when I uh, was drawing it, drawing the grid. quarter inch, back stitch to secure your stitches, line everything up as you sew, back stitch, cut your thread, on the top you want it flush, there's no point in making it too long on the top because you're actually just going to be covering that with another piece of binding. Fold this under, clip it. Again, don't try to pin through thick things. You're just going to hurt yourself and you'll end up with a lot of pleats where you don't want them. If you have a difficult time wrapping your binding around anything, anything that you're making, go ahead and invest in a product called Wonder Tape. I believe Dritz is the manufacturer of it. It's a washable, uh, dissolvable tape, basically, um, that's paper backed. It comes on a roll. And I'll try to show you what a new roll of it looks like at the end of the video. But you can actually tape your binding on prior to sewing it, and it keeps it from walking on you. And I do this sort of thing a lot. I don't necessarily have to do that. But, um,. If you're not comfortable with that, then that could really help you. Quarter of an inch. I just got two more of these to do.
Now this particular container, it was measured and is being crafted specifically for these net jars that I have. If you're just making random containers for things in your craft room or your sewing room, see I missed it there. I'm just gonna go back and catch that and I'm not gonna be too worried about it. But if you're just making um, containers for random storage use, you, you start the same thing. You start with a the base size on the bottom and then you decide how tall you want it. Um, a lot of the containers are made, I made are only three inches high. And um, so I would do a, a, maybe a six inch square, maybe a three by six rectangle, maybe three by eight rectangle if I'm gonna put a lot of scissors in it or something like that, you know. And um, you don't have to be as careful with um, maybe your seam allowance on the last step of sewing your binding in. This is the last row of binding. If you start from the bottom and work your way up, you're gonna you're gonna need to um, clip this in place. One of the corners I did, I started from the top, and it's actually easier to start from the bottom and work your way up. This sewing machine also automatically does a little back stitch. step now is to finish my edge with a, um, a bias trim. So I'm using the pre-made bias that um, that Moda has available. I love it. It's two and a half inch I think. Bias that's already um, pressed. It just saves me so much time. I, I just love it. So I'm going to start by um, sewing my bias down to the back so my little dogs there to the back and then I'm going to wrap it around and I'm going to top stitch it on the front so in order to prepare for that I'm going to actually fold this a quarter I mean not a quarter a 45 degree angle in and I'm going to kind of finger press that in place do it with your fingernail And I'm not going to start sewing at the very beginning of it. I'm going to start sewing a little bit further away because I want to be able to tuck in my binding. Again, I want to be able to sew with my needle in the down position because I have to move this a lot. You can clip it on prior to sewing if you want. I don't stretch my binding, I just make sure it's kind of slightly taut. And I, I push my seams, which are pretty heavy to one side. You might want to use a size 14 needle. I'm actually using a size 12 Microtex, it's working fine. Raise my presser foot, it's gonna get caught there a little bit. As I come to the last side, I'm, I just want to really pay attention 
to where my my binding is finishing up here. So I'm going to cut this and I'm just going to tuck it inside my fold and make sure that I'm getting through all those layers. And it's okay that this is sticking out a little bit there. I'm aware of where the top of my um, box is. And I'm trying to just push all this together and this is where an awl would be a really useful tool. I'm just gonna use a giant needle. Prior to wrapping this around, I'm going to come through and trim anything off that I need to. But I really want to pay attention to right here. Some of these corners are a little bulky, so I want to just trim them down so that when I actually wrap my binding around, I get a really smooth finish. I'll trim some of these extra threads out, and I'm going to turn this right side out. This time I am going to clip that and I'm going to also make sure that I'm pushing my binding in there so that my binding comes around pretty tight. This time, I really do want to clip it just to keep it from stretching while I work with it. It also gives me an opportunity to, if I'm too thick in some of these spots, this is when you're going to discover that. So as I work around and stretch my binding over the top edge, I could clip anything out of the way that really needs to come out of the way. And I want to try to get this as neat as possible. There are other ways to get your um, binding tidied up at the end, other quilting techniques. But I just want kind of a simple approach. So. I'm gonna start here, it's on the back, here's the front. I'm gonna start here, work my way around. And I usually don't start where my binding overlaps because if I need to kind of finger uh, press that in or ease it in, it, it makes it easier for me to do so. And I'm gonna top stitch. Some people don't mind hand sewing. I don't hand sew. I find it so much faster to do it on the machine. So when I'm done with this, we'll go back and look at all the other ones I made and I'll just give you some ideas and I'll review the process for you. These make fantastic gifts and it's a really great way to spruce up a bedroom, a craft room, your kitchen, bathroom, whatever. I'm actually making a bunch of them to go inside deep drawers that I have and I'm putting plastic containers in them. and. It's how I'm storing my silverware. But then it's pretty. I can pull it out and set it on the table and it looks really nice. Okay, so now the top stitching looks really good. I trim a lot of my things with black actually, but for filming purposes, and I, because I like it, 
for filming purposes. I did not want to do that. It's really hard to see uh, on black. But this is going to be the dog treat container. So go ahead and follow me back to the, um, the table over here. And I'll review what we did. So you take any container that you want. You figure out what the base size needs to be. So you can put it on a grid. And this is actually five inches by about five and a half inches. I made mine six inches by five and uh, 0.25. But to be honest with you, I could have gone um, five and a half by five and it would have still fit just fine. So you can do a sample one first. And anyway, but you can see how this goes in there. You know, so it's easy enough to get out and it can go in there. And then if you were just gonna use the container for storing things in, these are wide mouthed, which is really kind of nice, then it, it works. And this is actually washable, so, you know, it just really works great. I wanna show you a few that I made um, that did not involve containers. Uh, this little one, for example, is, and this is about as small as, I've made them a little bit smaller than this, but the smaller you are in here, the harder it is to handle, so be aware of that. This was some uh, leftover fabric when I was, I was testing some embroidery designs in my quilting machine. And so I had quilted these layers together through the soft and staple. And the fabric was so much fun. It was a, from a Tula Pink line, her All Stars, Stars line. And then um, the dots are also from the All Stars line. And then I had scraps of ombre fabric. And I used this for little scraps of fabric I have my leaders in there for those of you that are quilters, you know that you start with a leader. This was another piece of that and I made a longer container and I'm keeping my, my scissors and uh, cutting tools in here next to my sewing machine and that was just a really fun thing to do. This one is for napkins and what a fun way to put napkins on your dining room table you know so you can make make this out of holiday fabric it's, it was just really easy so these are three inches high so this, these two are also three inches high this one is seven inches high and this is I made a bunch of these to go around Kleenex boxes so I literally did four and a half square I think on the bottom and let me double check because that's a pretty standard five, five and a half, five inch square. So I drew a five inch square and then I just determined where I wanted to go from there. So five and a half inches high. So five inch square and then I measured five and a half inches all the way around and there you go. Kleenex. So I've got a lot of those also and they match different quilts that I've made and it's just kind of a fun thing to do. So anyway, thank you for joining us today. Um, and again, welcome to my studio. Sewing so should be fun.